A new fallout after a federal judge rules the NYPD's controversial stop and frisk policy is being used in an unconstitutional way. And now the city's police commissioner, Ray Kelly, is speaking out, claiming the ruling could lead to lives being lost. No question about it, violent crime will go up. But officers have to have the right of inquiry if they see some uh, suspicious behavior. So I can assure you this is not just a New York City issue. It's an issue throughout America. And this case has to be appealed, in my judgment, because it will be taken as a template and had significant impact in policing uh, throughout America. Let's bring in Keisha Heaven, defense attorney, former prosecutor, David Schwartz, defense attorney, and former prosecutor. Good to see you both. Thank you. Good to see you. David, look, stop and frisk can still be used. It just has to be used, according to the judge, in a race-neutral way. But look, a black detective testified it's not about race. It's about behavior. We're targeting people based on their behavior. Right. Is I, the judge wrong? No, the judge is not wrong. I, I don't know why the city is getting so excited about this. They're making it seem like stop and frisk has been thrown out. We have stop and frisk. Terry versus Ohio. It is constitutional. Right. What we can't do is we can't carry it out in a disproportionate factor, in a dis disproportionate way. Well, so, wait, a, wait a minute. If blacks and Hispanics uh, commit a disproportionate number of crimes, they're going to disproportionately okay. be stopped and frisked. Under that and theory, that uh, <clears throat> under that, under that theory, yes, but that's not what's happening, Greg. What's happening is well, that blacks and Hispanics are being disproportionately stopped in, in a way where there's no reasonable suspicion. Well, I, here I want to play a soundbite of Ray Kelly, and then I'll get your response, okay. Keisha. But here is Ray Kelly earlier today, and he makes a very important point. Take a listen. 4.4 million stops and out of that number of stops over a 10-year period the expert working for the plaintiff found six percent to be unjustified the judge in the case looked at 19 stops and they could have been any stops that the plaintiff uh, chose uh, she found that 10 of the 19 stops were constitutionally acceptable so we believe that the formula that was used which uh, uses census data is fundamentally flawed. This is ridiculous. Out of four million plus stops, she looks at 19 of them and finds that 6% were wrong. That's statistically insignificant, isn't it? I, I agree. And one of the things that you said, Greg, was that if a certain amount of people or a class of people are disproportionately committing crimes, it is going to lead the police to, you know, target them. And I don't agree with racial profiling, but again, don't loiter around an apartment building. You know, don't walk right. around with, you know, certain clothing and, and look in a suspicious way. And I think what the police officers have to do is make sure they're not abusing this reasonable suspicion right. standard. All right, look, uh, you mentioned Terry v. Ohio. Let's put it up on the screen. This is the seminal 1968 case on stop and frisk. Fourth Amendment is not violated when an officer stops and frisks a suspect if there is, and look at number two, reasonable belief the person may be armed and dangerous. An experienced cop, David, can tell if somebody is armed. You ask any cop and he can tell, most of them can, if somebody is armed. That's reasonable belief. Absolutely. And, and you know, ni over 90% of the cops, the police officers, do their job properly. However, I don't care what the judge looked at in this case. I was in the Brooklyn DA's office, and I know in certain neighborhoods, kids and people were being stopped for no reasonable suspicion whatsoever. They were being stopped because of the neighbor. There's a big difference between living in East right. New York but and the Upper always, East Side. You got bad doctors, you got bad uh, lawyers, you got bad cops, but they are statistically insignificant. The judge found only 6%. Now, you're going to change the entire policy no. and blame it on race based on 6%? What's wrong with a monitor? The FBI has a monitor. Why is the NYPD Why do you need so it if afraid it's only of having a monitor? Well, this is a good lawyer that's going to monitor the NYPD. But I think what, what um, Commissioner Kelly is saying is that his officers are in the trenches, so they get an idea of what the people are, I hate to say look like, but who's committing most of the crimes. And I read statistics showing that the majority of the apartment buildings that are participating in this program, I think it's called the Clean Halls programs, are the public um, housing projects. So, yeah. you know, the reality, the facts are the facts. And, and, and success is success. You've gone from roughly 2,262 murders a year 
to only 417. Because we have tremendous police force, and we and we 95. No, because they've been employing a very effective policy. And and no one is saying that Terry versus Ohio is out the window. No one is saying that. It's a monitor, Greg. Yeah. It's not well, a big. Philadelphia you know, has it's a, a monitor. monitor. They've done great. Forty percent decrease. The city crime, council, right? Keisha, complained. Oh, racism, racism. So Ray Kelly appears before the city council, and he says, "You know what? Do you understand that the lives?" that we are saving here are blacks and Hispanics. And all of a sudden, there was silence on the city council. Right. I think one of the things that we need to look at is those people, the innocent people living in those communities, they may be happy to have this policy black to say, on black you know crime, what? Hispanic We're, Hispanic right. They're crime. saving their children. They're keeping their houses saved. You know, what I think is a problem when people are harassed and they're innocent, you know, yeah. you don't want that. Forget about the city council. I mean, they were bamboozled into thinking that we did away with, with Terry versus Ohio. Right. Please. No, I mean, they, they're naive and they're uninformed. Naive. They're, all right. Exactly. David Schwartz, Keisha Heaven, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank Good you, to see Greg. you. Heather?